got the boss man dad's truck that we're working on. Uh, the other mechanic was working on this yesterday. And um, he, um, uh, the fuel pump needed to be replaced in here. So he actually uh, worked on this all day yesterday and he got the old fuel pump out, got the new fuel pump in, but then he uh, had to go. And so he left and I'm going to take over and put this thing back together. This thing back. Put back together and back on the road. Well, kind of hate doing this, but I hate jumping on somebody else's project. Got to do what you got to do. Yeah, trying to figure out where people are and stuff is. And the whole process is a little bit tricky sometimes. We'll get it figured out. I don't know why I started working without the gloves on. I got to go wash my hands, get some gloves on. Boss man's dad is actually taking. Black Pony. He's out there transferring because this one's not ready to go and he's got to go with the load, so he's going to be the test driver for it. Putting his stuff in there. I can't really record back here what I'm doing. It's just, I can barely, hardly need enough room for me to even see what I'm doing, so <coughs> don't feel left out. Number two. Okay, <clears throat> I have the fuel assembly, I have all the lines hooked up, I have all the pump, everything is all hooked up except for the main lines that go to the fuel rail. Um, that's the reason why the other mechanic stopped, he didn't like the way that it looked. Um, he, uh, there was some rust down in there and stuff, and he just like, oh, it's got to be replaced. And the boss actually did try to find some. you can't find anything. And he called all around different freight liners. Nobody has this free, this free fuel rail. And he talked to one guy and they said that it is on order. They've had it on order for a while. And uh, he said it's on back order. So we need to get this truck going. So I went in there with some uh, SOS and the scar pads and cleaned it all up inside there. Got it all nice and clean. And uh, I think it'll be fine. I'm going to put a... I think that the leaked got some water up in here and uh, rusted in there and that was a problem so we cleaned it all up and now we're going to change out all these gaskets uh, the dad's truck has had oil leaking out of these for a while um, it's always been uh, I'll get the truck in here do a big job on it and that's when I'll do it well it's that time so these are you guys have seen me do these before pretty easy to do these seals they leak they leak after time uh, to change these out, you just 19 millimeter wrench, break this one loose, and thread that. And then um, you get a socket. This one is from Snap On. It's got a part number of FLS1219, and it's for injector lines. And it's the same thing. It's a 19 millimeter. It's got that cut out to go around the fuel line. And um, you just put that around the fuel line, put it on there. And you just unscrew it. And then you gotta spin it around. And you just keep doing that. And what this does is these fuel lines, they go in through the cam housing and they screw right onto the side of the injector. This is what delivers fuel to your injectors. Now I reuse these lines 
Um, I think that they recommend that you change the lines. I have been reusing them and it seems to be working fine. Um, I did have one that leaked on a black truck when I put it back together. But I, um, let me just pull out. But, um, I, uh, loosened it back up and kind of wiggle a little bit and hand tighten it some more and then uh, tighten it back up and it's just like a little ball socket thing that seals it when you tighten it up it just seals it up and uh, I got it to seal um, what I do when I do pull these out is I take just a little bit of a like a 1200 or real soft you know emery or whatever and I go right around here and you can kind of see where it's worn on here that's where that seal is on and basically what happens is your cam housing is all full of oil. These go through and the line in here attaches to your injector. So that's where your fuel is delivered. But this is this part of it is exposed. It just kind of sits in there and all the oil is splashing around in there and stuff. And the oil leaks out through here. This is just an oil seal. That's all it is. So I'll clean that up. Then you take... Um, Take a 10 millimeter. You got two 10 millimeter bolts. Hands are all slippery from the diesel fuel. Get a little pick. And you just side there and pop it. And that's all this is right here. So I'm gonna get a little bit of um of um I think like a 1200 or so and just clean this uh, surface up so that it seals better. You don't want to take anything off here, you just want to clean it off, get the rubber that's imprinted on it cleaned off so it has a good chance to seal. And then I'll put this back together. Well guys, we got her all back together. Got all our fuel lines ran. Um, I ended up actually having the wrong fuel lines. And um, they actually got me a set of the fuel lines that were for a three filter system. They're for the older trucks. And I had to call the Freightliner place, and they had these in stock. They had the right ones in stock. And um, my boss was over towards Hagerstown, and he picked them up for me and dropped them off. In the meantime, I was actually working on um, 796. Um, there was a driver that used to work here. He quit for a while, and now he just came back. And um, he said that the other place was bad. He wanted to come back. And so he's got 796, it's a Kenworth T680, and I've been going through and I fixed a bunch of little things for him, getting that truck all good and go for him. And then uh, the boss dropped off the fuel lines, and now I am going to be priming this truck and firing this puppy up. So we just got to dump all our fuel in. Go. And we also added a water separator filter. Actually, the last time that I did a oil change, which was just not that many, it's like under 5,000 miles ago, just a few thousand miles, um, I couldn't find this filter. So I wasn't able to change it, and I had to let the boss know, and he had bought an extra one, so it was sitting here. So might as well put that in now.
you might think that was a little bit full, but it's going to suck it all up. It's all dry and everything, so I have to sit here and prime it to get feeling and waiting for the bubbles to stop. And the prime it, it's right here. Let's unscrew that. It's just a little plunger, and you just sit here and pump, pump, pump this thing. So I gotta sit here and do this about two or three hundred times, I guess, and I gotta keep filling it, and then I'll be uh, cranking it. Um, I actually got an idea off another guy on a YouTube channel and with these freight liners and how to prime them because there is machines that does this. You can have a machine that does this, but they're like three grand. They're very expensive. So boss ain't going to do that, but I found a guy on YouTube and he actually made his own and it made it out of a, um, a sandblaster tank from Harbor Freight and I watched a video and I was like, that's awesome. And all it does is this, you just have a connection, uh, it's like a quick connect deal that you plug right here, and that's what this is for. And uh, it's a priming port, and you hook it up to it, and um, you just, uh, you put a hundred pound, you hook hoses up to it, and then you fill the sandblaster tank with diesel fuel, and then you put air into it, about a hundred to 105 pounds of pressure, and you open up the valve, and it just blows all the fuel through, and it goes through the high pressure pump and everything. Primes everything right up. You get up in the truck, turn the key, fires right up. So I told the boss already, you're going to be giving me a credit card. Because <laughs> I will be making that one. <laughs> Make it a lot easier. But that's not for now. I got to get this thing going now. So just keep filling and pumping and priming and doing it over and over again. <laughs> I don't have 